Hi, my name is Jonas and this is my setup video for the OMP Hobby M2. You may remember me from the M1 setup video I did with TJ a while back and I know a lot of you have been eagerly waiting for this video to come out, so let's not talk on any further and get right into the setup. So let's first discuss who the setup is for and what it can do for you and how it can help you become a better pilot. My M2 setup incorporates a couple unusual techniques to improve the flying characteristics of the OMP Hobby M2, this little guy right here. I've done about 100 flights on this so far, on the setup, and I can tell you it's pretty flawless in how it flies, how it behaves, and the setup works for making it fly a lot bigger than it actually is. You can use this setup if you're a novice pilot, but also if you're a very advanced pilot who likes to fly 3D. It incorporates a couple things like a fix for the OMP flight controller's inherent dead band. It allows you to add rescue to your setup. It supports self-leveling in all flight modes. It also brings support for up to 8 RPMs, which is new compared to my M1 setup and also has a couple other smart things to support your flight. So without further ado, power up the radio and let's see what we're up to. So the first thing you will see when you load up this model is that you will not have a model image. That's because my model image is from a website called skyracoon.com. Skyracoon, for example, has this beautiful M2 image in the other colors as well. They provide images for the M2 Explore. They allow you to download models for quadcopters, planes, and use them with your radio for free. Link down below. So let's get to the basics. We have a three minute timer in this model. That's appropriate for my 3D flying style. If you just hover in the lowest RPM, you can increase that to nine minutes. If you fly around gently, you can maybe do five or six minutes. And if you fly even harder than me, you can even lower it for two minutes 30. The timer is set and reset in a smart way by the safety and hold switch. I will show you what these are later on. In, a, in essence, it works like this. Pull hold, the timer stops. Pull safety switch, along with hold, the timer resets, which means you can land during one flight and not have your timer reset, but between flights, if you pull both switches, timer resets. Just a little thing to help you not having to reset your timer on your own. Then, if you scroll down, you will see that this setup is made for the SFHSS satellite, which, if we take a look at the helicopter, is this little satellite right here, sold by OMP Hobby. It interfaces with the SBUS port up top and provides you a convenient way to fly your model. So, you just go in, click bind, hold the button on the satellite, and it binds. If you're like me and prefer to fly Spectrum DSM-X for improved reception, I have the Spectrum satellite mounted on the other side of the helicopter. You will have to invert the output for channel 5 if you do this. So you would go in here, change this parameter to DSM-X. Uh, you would also go up here and enable extended limits because spectrum satellites work a bit differently and then you would come in here go to the outputs panel go to channel 5 go in here and invert this direction so you get proper self-leveling and not leveling properties when flying with spectrum that is all you have to do to fly with spectrum and otherwise we're good to go let's take a look at the flight functions the arguably most important thing about the setup First off, I want to discuss the deadband fix. The deadband fix refers to a fix for a trade of the OMP flight controller. Let me put the canopy back on. That manifests itself in a control deadband. Imagine you have the helicopter flying and give a small input of the elevator. Uh, the flyerless works in a way that up to eight to nine percent inputs are ignored. So you give this little tiny input. For example, 4%, 5%, and the helicopter will not move. And once you cross the threshold of 9%, the helicopter will start to rotate. This is usually fine for beginners, but for advanced pilots like me, this can be kind of annoying. So I implemented a fix where you, if you check the monitor right here, move the stick. I move this, you know, let's, let's check the aileron channel. I move the stick slowly, 
you see the output jumps immediately to 8%, minus 8 plus 8. Same for the elevator, which skips this control deadband entirely, makes the control react more like a larger helicopter, um, avoids using negative expo, which makes the helicopter feel worse in the air, and generally allows you more control over your helicopter on small corrections and movements. Then we also have multiple flight modes. Uh, I can show you this as the helicopter is not powered up currently. Um, first flight mode sets the throttle at 10%, that's 4,500 RPM. Second flight mode sets it at 35%, that's 5,600 RPM. And the third flight mode sets it at 6,250 RPM, which is a very aggressive head speed for really hard 3D. What you will also find is that the collective channel, channel 6, changes with the flight modes, allowing you to set three collective curves, all in the curves menu. I'll show you that in a sec. But what we also have, which is new to the setup, is we have support for up to eight different RPMs. So if you check this out, I'm in the lowest flight mode right now. And I will use my phone to show you this real quick. The TX-16S has these six buttons up top. And what many people don't know, these are a six position switch. So if I click number two, you see channel three drops, drops further, 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 further until we're at minus 20%. And by doing this in the lowest flight mode, you can drop your head speed even further than the 4,500 RPM I set, which gives you effectively eight different RPMs to fly. You can adjust all these parameters by going into the curves menu and adjusting flight mode 1 for RPM 1, flight mode 2, RPM 2, flight mode 3, RPM 3, and the three collective curves for the corresponding flight mode. So if you, for example, want your flight mode 1 to have no negative collective, you just come in here, edit this curve, add a flat section here, you're done, you're good to go. Another very important trait of the setup is the rescue setup. And for that, I will have to plug in the helicopter real quick, make sure all the rotation is on. For checking the rescue setup and for, and for demonstrating it, I'm gonna have to spool up the helicopter real quick so the control loop of the swash plate becomes active. If you want to do this at home, remove all blades, main blades and tail blades to avoid injury. I'm a trained professional, I can do this. Uh, I'm just gonna set it on the floor real quick. Just spool it up real quick. And we now have movement in the control loop of the swash blade. Let me take off the canopy real quick so I can show you what is going on. Okay, so you have a momentary switch on your TX16S. That is in the stock configuration switch SH. I remapped it to switch SF on mine. This momentary switch allows you to rescue your helicopter if you're in a difficult situation. I can de demonstrate this by holding the helicopter vertically in front of my face and then pulling rescue. Watch what happens. Did you see that? The swash plate first tilts back tilts back when I pull rescue. You can also see me pulling rescue by channel 5 flipping. And when the swash plate tilts back, when the swash plate tilts back, it tries to level the helicopter. And then the collective shoots up to a high positive value 0.4 seconds later in the lowest RPM and 0.3 seconds later in the higher RPMs. That way, if you're inverted and pull rescue, the helicopter will first flip over and then shoot up with positive collective until you let go of the switch. This can get you out of dangerous situations where you may crash the helicopter and help you regain control by bringing the helicopter into an attitude you're more likely to be comfortable with than, than the flight attitude you were in previously. There are a couple settings to adjust for rescue. For example, the rescue curves. RQ 1, 2, and 3 specify the collective points to which the collective will rise when re rescue is active, as well as in the 
mixes page under uh, channel 6. These are collective mixes. You can edit these and change the delay for the switch up. If you fly very low RPM, you may need to increase this. If you fly high RPM, you can decrease this. So it feeds in collective earlier. We also have a dedicated self-leveling switch, which is in my case SB. I will show you this on my phone again. Um, SB is right here. If you pull this down, the helicopter is in self-leveling. You can see this by the swashplate not zeroing out after tilting the helicopter. If we switch this back up, you can see it's in 3D mode again by how the swash plate levels out after tilting. That way you can immediately revert to self-leveling if you need to and fly in stabilized mode. Additionally, I will have to switch up the helicopter for that. We have a hold and safety switch. The hold and safety switches are SA as well as, in my case, it's SH. For your case, it will be SF, because that's the default non-momentary switch. So what you will see my timer do, check my timer, it's up here. If I switch into flight, it will count down. If I pull hold, the timer will stop. If I pull the safety switch, the timer will stop. And if I pull hold and the safety switch at the same time, the timer resets. That way you can reset your timer easily between flights without the hassle of going into the menu and clicking reset. So that's all pretty nice, but what if you want to fly a radically different switch setup than I do? Worry not, this setup is very modular and easily changeable by adjusting local switches. Local switches are nice because you can use these throughout a setup and just change one input and it will change everywhere else. For example, LO1 is the lowest RPM, LO2 center, LO3 highest RPM. LO4 is throttle hold, LO5 is safety switch, LO6 is rescue switch, and LO7 is self-leveling. Currently, self-leveling is on switch SB, but what if I wanted it on SC? I'll go in here, go to the switch, change it to SC, and now I can switch my self-leveling on and off with switch SC. We're leaving this on SB because that's where I want it. So let's come to the flight controller setup. The flight controller setup is very important for how the helicopter flies because it determines how the control loop reacts to your inputs and external influences. So let's plug the helicopter back in and take a look at these and take a look at how we set them. Helicopter is initialized. Okay, so this is the flight controller up here and it allows you to adjust parameters to make the helicopter fly as you wish. For that, you take a thin object like a screwdriver and poke the flight controller in this little hole here. It's called set. And you hold that. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Until it starts flashing. You see, the first setup point is flashing, which is, what is this? Speed for rudder. Rudder speed. And I will just um, put the settings on screen that you will want to set if you want my setup because I'm not going through these individually now. Uh, just know these settings will give you a more linear control feel. They will reduce wobbles on the helicopter and generally make it fly like a bigger helicopter. These are the optimal settings I found for my flying. You can obviously go from there and adjust them to your liking. Um, to briefly explain what each setting does, we have gyro, speed and agile. Gyro is the overall gyro gain, so if the helicopter tends to oscillate a bit, for example in a hover like this, you can lower the gyro gain to combat this. If it feels too loose, you can increase the gyro gain to combat that. Agile is the uh, feed forward of the flight controller, so if you give a quick elevator input, or aileron for that matter, Agile determines how much of that input is directly passed on to the swash plate 
for purposes of making the helicopter react more directly. These settings, oh crap, I'm just completely messing up my setup. These settings adjust the initial stick feel of the helicopter, not the final rate. Final rate is determined by the speed setting. The speed setting determines how fast the helicopter will rotate at full stick deflection. If you're a novice flyer, you can reduce that setting a little to tame the helicopter down. If you're an advanced 3D pilot who wants faster rates than me, you can increase the setting. Another important aspect for this is the servo setup. So we click this button through the setup till we end up with servo. Servo allows you to center your swash plate and to level your swash plate. And you want to make sure that your swash plate is level in both elevator and aileron, as well as centered on the rotor shaft so that the blades fly in line with each other when folded. That way you can guarantee that you have a clean setup for your flyboarders to work with and for the next step, collective adjustment. Collective adjustment is an important step because it allows you to determine how much collective pitch you want for your helicopter, which determines your overall rotor thrust you can get. So if you press the button once more from the servo setup, you get to the pitch setup. And in here, you can adjust the collective endpoints. First, make sure your collective is at zero in the servo monitor and fold your blades. Check once again that they're in line like this. I did not totally just bend them to be perfectly in line. They were before. Ideally, it should look like this, perfectly in line. Then you go to full collective and a simple way to set pitch distance is by calculating it and measuring the distance between the blade tips. For example, for this setup, make sure you are in RPM 1 to get the full collective throw. I want my tips to be apart 87 millimeters. You can see this is the distance between the tips, 87 millimeters. And 87 millimeters gives you approximately 14.5 degrees of collective. I found this to be a very good number for this helicopter to fly at. It does not overload the tail if you slam in full collective, but it gives you really good thrust and control for flying. And it's also a bit reduced in subsequent higher RPMs to account for the additional rotor thrust from the higher RPM. You will want to set these 87 millimeters for full positive as well as full negative. You change these by moving the elevator stick. So once you have all these curves in your helicopter, you're finally ready to go out and fly. But there's one more setting I want to talk about, and that is RPMs. The stock RPMs I set 4,500, 5,600 and 6,250 may not be for you. They are my preference for my personal flying style, but if you want to get to a specific RPM, you can use the following curve that I'm gonna show on screen right now to look up the RPM you want and set that RPM in the respective flight mode curve. So for example, if you want your lowest RPM to be closer to 3600 for very gentle hovering and smooth flying, you can do that by just lowering the flight mode one curve and dropping these two points to the corresponding value it should be minus 10 percent or something maybe you'll see on screen so with that find links below to my setup skyracoon.com my channel and the omp hobby on two and all that's left to say is happy flying bye